All right, good evening. Glad to see you here tonight. Let's all stand and uh, let's turn to hymn number 269. Hymn 269, the words will be on the wall. Let's all sing out tonight. Sing it out on the first together. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to save him and soar, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? On the third. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling end of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? King, a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? All right, thank you for being here tonight. Let's turn and greet each other as she continues to play. As we head back to seats, we're going to sing this um, chorus here. The Lord is good. Song number 200 in your hymn book. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. Let's sing it out. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good. Tell it so others may know. Tell of his blessings and tell of his love. Tell how he's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good. Tell it wherever you go. All right, thank you for singing tonight. As the ushers come forward to receive our offering tonight, we're praying for our pastor and DJ. Uh, they're at a conference in uh, Arizona. Let's pray that God will bless their time out there and that they can be a blessing uh, to others out there. I know there's a gathering of preachers, and so it's always a good opportunity when you can encourage another pastor friend and uh, encourage him and his church. Let's continue to pray for um, Ms. Donna Baker's family. Uh, I got word about an hour ago that her son Jeremy passed away, and so Ms. Donna was a member here for a very, very long time, and... Um, we used to, uh, in our hearts, we definitely still count her as a member, and uh, she's done some good things 
uh, through the years for our church. I would say some, would say many good things. But her son, Jeremy, passed away. And uh, so let's keep her in our prayers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given to us. I want to thank you for our church family. Thank you for your mercies to us. We pray tonight that you would bless this offering and that you would use it to further the gospel. We do pray that you would be with our pastor and DJ. I ask that you would bless them, help them to be a blessing. And uh, we ask that you would help them to be an encouragement to the pastor friends that are around. We do pray tonight that you would uh, be with Miss Donna's family and that you would give them comfort and uh, help us, Lord, as a, as a church. Many, many of us here still know and have contact with her. I pray that you would just help us to be able to reach out to her and let her know uh, that we're here for her. We do pray that you would just uh, be with the family tonight. And we ask that you would bless our time in your word and that you would challenge us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you for giving tonight. If you have your Bibles with you, take it with me, please, and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to be here tonight. I'm talking a little bit about the Sermon on the Mount. This is just a continuation from Matthew chapter 5. And uh, the Beatitudes that were mentioned in that chapter of Matthew chapter 5. Let me have Matthew chapter 6 tonight. And uh, kind of give you more of an overview in our Bible study tonight on refocusing our priorities. Refocusing our priorities. Uh, where do our priorities lie tonight? And uh, just coming to church and doing a heart checkup before the Lord tonight. Because He's the only one that knows your heart sitting here tonight. And uh, I want to look at Matthew chapter 6 and just talk briefly about these things, about refocusing our priorities. In Matthew chapter 6, this is just simply a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is teaching in Matthew chapter 6 about uh, the right way to pray, to give, and to trust. I would dare say that all of us struggle in all three of those areas, do we not? Praying, giving, and trusting. Those are three areas that Jesus really focuses in on and says, are these your priorities? In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1, the Bible says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy right, the left hand know what thy right hand doeth. When the Bible says, when thou, there in verse 3, that's presumption, presumption. I want to look at these four areas that are mentioned here. I talked about praying, giving, and trusting. But there's four areas here 
that Jesus focuses in on and says, these should be your priorities, and in your human weaknesses, they're most of the time misplaced when you get your eyes off of God. So there's some misplaced priorities here, and there's four areas in our lives that Jesus really hits on. I want to look at these tonight. Our priorities are going to demonstrate where our hearts are. Number one, I want you to look at the first thing here. It's found in verses 1 through 8. This is the misplaced priority in our worth. The misplaced priority in our worth. The hypocrites, the Pharisees of Jesus' day would love to come and walk the streets. They would love to let everybody know that they're praying. <laughs> they would wear the prayers on, on them, actually. And they wanted to walk up and down, and they, praying in the synagogue, just as long as you see me praying. And of course, when Jesus was walking this earth, he turns this whole thing around and says, that's not how it should be. Somebody said this, do we pray or give to be heard of men or of God? That makes all the difference right there. Just answer that one question. Are we here tonight at church because we were expected to be here? Are we here tonight at church because we're coming to hear from the Lord? What's our priority? Why, why are we here tonight? Um, are we reading God's Word? What's the priority behind that? What's the motive behind it? The Bible teaches us in Matthew 10 and verse 31, Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. In Psalm 139, the Bible says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I have great worth or importance to God the Father. We know the Lord's Prayer is recorded here in just a few verses, and this was more so just a guideline of how to pray. Private devotional prayer will lead us to pray effectively in public. Are we spending time with the Lord in prayer in private? Where's our prayer life at tonight? Jesus says in verse 4, That thine alms may be in secret, thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. The word secret there has to do with privacy. Uh, the word reward in verse 4 has to do with prosperity. There's a link here. There's a connection that Jesus is trying to make for all of us. And he's saying that seek me in secret, reward in public. But the Pharisees and the hypocrites at this time had the whole thing backwards. And they said, if you could just see me pray, if you could just see me read God's word, if you could just see me witness to somebody else, are you seeing me serving? Why do we serve the Lord in the ministries here of our local church? Is it to be seen of men, to have man's applause, or is it to be seen of God? And let God choose to bless us as he sees fit. Somebody said, let God be present and you will have enough of an audience. Why don't we pray more? Now listen, I, God gave me this message for myself tonight, okay? I'm not just preaching to you sitting in the chairs tonight. This is a message for the preacher tonight. Why don't we pray more? Ask yourself that question. Is God enough of an audience to spend more time in prayer? Let the Lord speak to your heart about it tonight. Or do we have to let somebody else know that, that we're praying? Hey, let's all come in and let's pray together. There's time for corporate prayer. There's time for a prayer meeting just like, like tonight. But what about when it's just us and God? Is God enough? That's basically what Jesus is saying. Is God enough? Verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues, in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Jesus is just really repeating and emphasizing what he just said up in verse 4. <laughs> he said, spend more time in, in, in the secret place. Do we have a secret place? 
If you don't have a secret place, I'm going to encourage you, start tonight. When you go home tonight, find that secret place. Find it. I know many of us have uh, small children. It's, it's hard to find a secret place <laughs> when you have little children. But I'm going to encourage you, if you have to get up extra early, uh, I, I don't know what the time works out for you, but make sure you have that secret place. And just remember this, when you go to pray, that it's not the length of your prayer, but it's the strength of your prayer. It's the strength of your prayer. Misplaced priorities in our worth. How much are we worth to God? We as human beings like to put our worth as how other people view us. And that's exactly where the Pharisees were here. I will have influence. I will have importance if they see me pray. Think about it. If they see me serving. They want a man's applause so bad. And Jesus says, not so. A misplaced priority in our worth. I have every bit of worth in Jesus Christ. That's my motive for being at church tonight. That's my motive for serving. That's my motive for giving. Look with me in verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Don't just repeat something over and over. All right, Lord, it's just me and you again, and I'm just going to nonchalant pray the same prayer over and over. No, have a real conversation with the creator of the universe. We're going to the holy of holies. We're going before a holy God. We want God to work in our hearts and in our lives. Think about it. You have great value and you have great worth to the creator of the universe. And when you understand that, you will say, hey, that's where my worth is. Let me place the priority of my worth at the feet of Jesus. That's all the audience that I need to feel like I have worth in this life. I want you to look with me at the second thing. I want you to look at verse 9. I want you to see here in the following verses, this is... Uh, obviously, um, how we should pray <laughs> the Lord's Prayer. But I want you to look at this, and as we read down through it, just think with me. Number two, write this down, if you will, if you're taking some notes tonight. Misplaced priority in our will. All right? W I L L. Misplaced priority in our will. When we go and pray, the reason why we don't get our prayers answered many times is because we are pray- praying according to the will of me. <laughs> God is saying here, pray according to the will of of the Father. Look at verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in earth, as it is in heaven. Do we pray about God having his will done in our hearts? Uh, In our family, in our local church here? Or are we consumed with the disease of me. (laughs) Lord, I know that I'm praying for this, but why are we praying and asking God for that? Can we answer? Is it for a selfish interest? This is basically a guideline of prayer. We don't have to pray exactly this way here. We don't have to say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and just repeat the Lord's prayer all the way through. God says this is more of a principle of prayer. And I want you to look with me. In verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, Lord, provide for me today. I'm guilty of praying, Lord, I'm seeing things coming up in the future. Provide for me then. And God reminds me, what about today? You have today, but you're not promised tomorrow. What about today? Look at what the Bible says in verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God puts an emphasis here in his prayer on forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness sets us free. Somebody said, in heaven there is no disobedience or obstacles to God's will. The angels are not saying, Lord, I don't know about that. Lord, I'm not going to do that. Isn't it an interesting thing? The only obstacles uh, are us. It's our hearts. It's our minds. What about my will? 
I don't know if this fits. Lord, I know you want me to do this, but I don't know if this, that, that fits the narrative from my life that, that, that I thought of. Think about it. It's a misplaced priority in our will. The Bible says in verse 12, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Your prayers should end in praise. I preached a few weeks ago about the Bible mentioning the word praise more than prayer. Quite a bit more, actually. This is an example of the Lord's prayer. We should end our prayer time with the Lord in the secret place with praise. Are we just so in a rush in our lives where we we rush in and we rush right back out? The Bible teaches us of how we conform our will to God's will for our lives. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can't know the will of God apart from the Word of God. So I encourage you, when you go in to pray, spend time in the Word. You want to know what God's will is for you today? God's going to reveal it to you through His Word. We can't rush in and rush out. We've got to spend time in in His Word. George Mueller, everybody has probably read some kind of quote or biography, heard some kind of story of George Mueller, a great praying man, had an orphanage. He said something to the line, or along the lines of how he had spent more time in prayer and how he could not even imagine how he could get up and go about his day without spending time with the Lord in prayer and in His Word. He said, I dare say there's probably uh, more people in this world that have more to do than I do. He said, but it's something I make time for and I have found supreme joy in. God, He recorded, so, he recorded thousands of answers to prayer. George Mueller was a praying man, and he learned to pray, and he learned to give God praise as well. Somebody may say, your will be done in different ways and in different moods, different tones. A man may say with fatalism and resentment, you will do your will. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. Your will wins, but I don't like it. Or he may say it with a heart of perfect love and trust in a perfect God. Do your will because I know it's the best. Change me where I don't understand or accept your will. Do we ever pray that? Lord, I don't understand your will, but change me so I can understand your will. Do we pray that? A misplaced priority in our will. I want you to know this, though, that God doesn't have to have your help in accomplishing His will. Somebody said, Yet, God would invite us to participate through prayers, uh, through our heart's devotion to Him, and through our actions in seeing His will be done on earth, because that's what changes us. That's what changes us. God invites us into His work, uh, into His harvest field. And many times, we don't want to enter into that because... Like the Pharisees back at the beginning of chapter 6 here. Will I be recognized, Lord? If I'm not going to be recognized, I don't know if I can conform to that will. Think about it. So many people in our churches across America, across the world, no doubt, they just sit and sour, but they never serve. We should be serving, and the motive behind that should be the Lord Jesus Christ. You ought to have an audience of one. That's all that you need. If you're seeking more motivation from the the pastor, from the assistant pastors, from from the ministry leaders. You've got the wrong motive that you're seeking. You just need the motive of the Lord Jesus Christ. You love Him so, and you'll serve Him. Let your will transform to His will. Number three, look with me down at verse uh, 19. Verse 19. Verse 18 just reiterates what verses 4 and 6 said about finding a secret place praying in the secret place, God rewarding you openly. Talks a good bit about fasting. We don't talk a whole lot about that. I won't belabor uh, that point tonight, but um, 
there are certain seasons in our lives where we have to, it brings us too, too fast to, to turn away certain things for a certain time so we can hear from God. Um, the studies that I've done on fasting have a lot to do with uh, denying food from yourself for a certain time. Um, and I, I'm in agreement with those things, but I'll say this as well. What about a media fast? <laughs> we, we're glued to these things so many times, or a TV or iPads or some form of technology. Uh, we just have, we're glued to those things. Maybe a media fast would help you if you're trying to hear from God, the God of heaven. I want you to notice the third thing here of refocusing our priorities. The third misplaced priority that we find is in verse 19 through 24, and it's the misplaced priority of wealth. The misplaced priority of wealth. We really struggle with this one. It's not wrong to have riches, but it is wrong when riches have us. Verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Eternal treasures. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. You see, when money have our hearts more than anything else, it casts a great shadow in our lives. That's all that we can see. When money has a hold of us more than anything else, and that's become the priority in our lives, it destroys our relationships. It destroys how we, per, how we would perform at work even. We're so after the dollar bill that maybe we begin to be, uh, begin to be dishonest in what we're doing in our work. There's a whole list and line that we could go down tonight, but the point tonight that I'm trying to make is we have a misplaced priority in our wealth many times. We put more trust in our riches than we do the God of heaven. Lord, I don't know if I can tithe. Lord, I don't know if I can give to missions. Lord, I don't know if I can give to that or this. Where's the priority? Because God says in verse 20, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God's saying this, where is your heart? God always goes to the heart. And he's talking about the wealth in these following verses. Where does your loyalty lie? Verse 24 talks about not being able to serve two masters. You'll love one, hate the other. I want to say this, that in James chapter 1, in verse 8, the Bible talks about a double-minded man being unstable in all his ways. I'm after money, God, yes, but then, God, I'm after you too. No, no, no. God says, I want your number one loyalty. I want, I want all of your heart. Not just part, but I want all of it. The Bible says at the end of verse 24, you cannot serve God and mammon. Cannot serve God and mammon. Somebody said the master does not say it is wrong to possess earthly treasure. He does say it is wrong to lay it up for yourself. We're to hold on to it as his stewards. Everything God's given to you, he's entrusting to you to be his steward. How are we stewarding our wealth tonight? How are we stewarding our finances tonight? Verse 25, the fourth and last thing here, there's a misplaced priority in our worry. Jesus knew exactly what he was talking about because we all have the tendency to worry, do we not? I do. I worry about this. I worry about, is that going to get done? I don't know, Lord. Um, how am I going to make it tomorrow when I wake up? I don't know. We worry about all of these things. And Jesus put all of them to rest. Stay with me tonight because at the very end, I'm going to give you the, the remedy for these four misplaced priorities. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap 
nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? <laughs> Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or dressed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. God already knows what you have need when you go before Him in prayer. He already knows. I was riding down the road today and I was praying. And it was almost like I was withholding something in my heart. I didn't want to say it. And I was reminded, I said, Lord, it's just me and you in this van. There's nobody else even around me. Why am I afraid? To request this of you. It's just, you already know that I'm going to request this of you. It's just me and you. Uh, I don't even have my family in here. Why am I afraid to pray that prayer? God reminded me that He cares for me. The Bible says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, we seek after so many things materialistic things, do we not? God's got a remedy for our anxiety, and it is faith. Faith. Faith is total confidence in the provision of God. Do you believe God will take care of you? Lord, if I tithe, I don't know if you're going to take care of me. Oh, He will, I promise you. Lord, if I, if I give to this, I don't know if, if you're going to take care of me. Yes, He will. Lord, if I give more, let's, just, let's get off the subject tonight of money right now. Lord, if I give more of my time, my talent to you. Are you going to reimburse me, Lord? <laughs> That's how we think so many times. Lord, how are you going to reward me? If I know the reward, I'll give more. God says, not so. Not so. I want you to believe me. A lack of faith is going to lead you to a life of psychological anxiety. Let me tell you what Romans chapter 14 and verse 23 sums it up as. Anxiety and worry. Whatsoever is not of faith, is of what? Sin. Sin. Our worry many times can, can very easily turn into sin. You know why? Because it turns into the sin of unbelief. And the only sin that condemns people to hell is the sin of unbelief. Unbelief. Lord, I don't know if you can do this. Become a believing Christian tonight. Believe God. Believe His Word. Somebody said, you can be as faith, unfaithful to God through care as well as through covetousness. Many times we preach on money and if, you know, you don't, if, if God doesn't have your money, He doesn't have you and, and, and we agree about those things. But what about God's care for us? God's care. We can be guilty tonight of, of the sin of worry. The word seek in verse 33, look with me, the Bible says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. The word seek means a continual or a constant seeking. I hope that we all got that tonight. Persistent prayer. Persistent. Hey, I prayed that prayer like six months ago, and it, God just didn't answer it. So I just, I quit knocking. Ask, right? Right? Seek, knock. <laughs> it's persistent prayer. But seek ye first. Translated from the Greek, it means continual or a constant seeking. What am I seeking? Here's what you're seeking. Seeking the kingdom of God involves a continued hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. What are you after? You're after God's heart. That's what you're after. Lord, make my heart after your heart. That's the continual asking that you're after tonight. 
Somebody said, when our priority is spiritual, God will take care of the material. For where God guides, He provides. I've seen that truth be first in my own life. I'm sure you have. But are we there yet? Every day. Are we trusting the Lord? Refocusing our priorities. When God says, seek ye first of the kingdom of God, I wrote this down. This must be the rule of our life when ordering our priorities. When I wake up in the morning, God's at the top. I've just got so much to do. You don't know all the work that I've got to do today. I've just got, I got so much to do. We're in the same boat. <laughs> I've got a lot to do every day as well. God's pointing us back in Matthew chapter 6 here, the Sermon on the Mount. He's finishing it up, and he says, Am I at the top of your list? The remedy to all these misplaced priorities, to getting them back in line, is making sure God's at the top of your priority list. The Bible says in verse 33, Seek the first uh, kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. Lord, help me in my work today. I've got a lot to do. Lord, I've got some things coming up that I'm not sure how to take care of. Seek me first. Verse 34, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. There's, a, there's plenty going on in our world. You don't have to seek it out. It'll come seeking you. There's plenty to do. Are we simply setting aside time for God? Is God number one on our list? I came across this poem, and I'm going to close with this tonight. But it's entitled, Too Busy to Pray. You may have heard it. It says, I got up early one morning and rushed right into the day. I had so much to accomplish that I didn't take time to pray. Problems just tumbled about me, and heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me, I wondered. He answered, you didn't ask. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all my keys at the lock. God gently and lovingly chided, why, child, you didn't knock. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the day toiled on gray and bleak. I wondered why God didn't show me. He answered me, but you didn't seek. I woke up early this morning and paused before entering the day. I had so much to accomplish that I had to take time to pray. Tonight, where are your priorities? God hits this list of four. He talks about our worth. He talks about our will compared to His will. He talks about our wealth talks about our wealth, and then God addresses our worry. In application tonight, let me just ask you this. For you, this is Bible study tonight. You self-reflect tonight inwardly before you and God. God's the only one who sees the heart tonight. Let me ask you this. Who's got the priority in your life, Jesus or your worth in other people's eyes? Who has priority in your life, Jesus or your will? Is your will more important than God's will for your life? Who has priority in your life? Is it Jesus or your wealth? Where's your money going? You'll know, all right? Who has priority in your life? Is it Jesus or your worry? Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, First Peter tells us. Let God take all that worry away. Let Jesus become that priority for you. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Just seek the Lord tonight. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this study from Matthew chapter 6. How you encourage us through your word. Lord, I view Matthew chapter 6 as reassuring as a Christian. Because it tells me God the Father's heart towards me as His child. I'm comforted in, in hearing Matthew chapter 6 tonight. Lord, you so care for me that you put this in your word to say, listen, 
get your priorities right, and you'll take care of these areas of my life, Lord, that I do worry about many times. Lord, you'll take care of me. You'll take care of our church. Lord, you'll take care of anybody who will seek you first. And I pray tonight that you would help us to refocus our priorities if they're misplaced tonight. Help us to get them back in line with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to go over the prayer sheet tonight. If you did not get one, some of the guys in the back may have one. But I want to look at this just briefly tonight, and then we'll spend some time in prayer. And however God spoke to your heart tonight in the message, if you would like to come forward and pray about that, I encourage you to do so. Or if you'd like to just simply pray about what we're going to go over here tonight on the prayer bulletin. There's uh, the city council members that are mentioned there. We do need to be praying for them. And um, our, our mayor uh, is still fairly new, and uh, he's facing a lot, uh, fighting for a good cause, cause is in our city. Let's pray for him. And, of course, our own Miss uh, Thompson. Let's pray for her. Um, our police chief, all of our college students. And uh, before long, they will be out for the summer. And uh, my kids have been reminding me that they only have six weeks of school until summer break. They are counting down the days, and they're looking very much forward to it. Um, yes, <laughs> we wish uh, Terry Patton uh, a happy birthday on the 13th, uh, coming up here very soon. And then uh, tomorrow, uh, Bobby and Pam Gill's anniversary is tomorrow, and uh, they've been longtime members here. There's some expectant mothers here that we are praying for. And I do know there are some um, baby showers coming up very soon. And uh, we'll get more details out as uh, that's forthcoming. Our missionary of the week is David Gordon, the David Gordon family. Um, if you get our church email, if you don't, you can get on our church app. It's on the App Store or the Google Play Store. You can download the app. You can have access to it right there in case you, you don't get the email. If you don't get the email, see uh, Victoria tonight, and she'll make sure your email address gets put in there. But I just want to make sure that you are aware, every time we have a Missionary of the Week now, we've been doing this probably since October, we uh, get their prayer letters and we put them in there so you can read them personally. And I know Brother uh, Antman does a good job on Sunday nights in giving us a report and an update, but what he gives you is a limited time within the evening service. He gives you the highlights, and it, but if you would like to read more of what, what's going on with our missionaries in depth and detail. Some of the missionaries write uh, pretty long prayer letters to us. And if you'd like to have more insight to those ministries, I encourage you to uh, read it on those platforms there. Um, we got some upcoming events. I'm excited about it. This community evangelism is good. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we had some little business card size um, gospel film cards come in. We customize them. On the back, it says provided by our church name, our address as our website. It's got how they can contact us. But there's a QR code on the back, and that QR code goes directly to the video that is on YouTube, the gospel video. And so, um, but I assumed that we would probably be passing these out in our area. And uh, if they uh, trust Christ, they need to be able to be tied to a local church. And so this will have a lasting imprint, I'm hoping, uh, on our community. We have 5,000 of these. 5,000. There's plenty. Okay? Uh, make sure you take these and, and give them out. And um, the biggest thing on here is not our church name. It's the gospel. Okay? It's the gospel. That's what we're after, getting the gospel in people's hands. Youth Workers Night is coming up on Sunday night, April 21st. Uh, we'll be honoring our youth workers in the children's ministry and the youth ministry, the teen ministry, but also we'll be having some youth serving that night in our service. Looking forward to that. Good opportunities for them. Some of them are looking at me like, wow, just found out about that. You're going to be serving, and you're going to have a good time with it. Compass Conference is coming up. Um, I'm excited about it. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that's being put in place for that. We mailed out 511 postcards to churches. <laughs> I don't know what kind of response we're going to have, but that's a lot of postcards. And we're excited to see what God will do. Also, we have an email going out sometime tomorrow of close to 500 more email uh, address contacts to churches and pastor friends. Um, we're excited about it. 
and uh, we've already had people um, register. We have an online registration. Of course, it's free registration for this year. Um, but our church, we are hosting this meeting. And so we'll be having people come in from different places, no doubt. Um, let's be welcoming. Let's set up, open our arms and welcome these pastors and Christian workers. Uh, there may be some evangelists that will join us and missionaries. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, I was able to go around and attend quite a few conferences and meetings myself um, in years past. And uh, there were certain meetings I left so encouraged. I left ready to do more for the Lord. And the purpose behind the Compass Conference is to edify, to equip, and to engage God's people to do more with what God has given you to do as your ministry. And so we'll be getting the schedule printed up, and it'll be in the Sunday uh, bulletin newsletter. And so uh, make sure you keep your eyes open for that. We have special speakers coming. Uh, Byron Fox will be here. Um, was uh, texting with him some today. He's excited, and um, he has been all over, but he's excited to be here. We'll have a special choir workshop on Sunday afternoon uh, with our choir here. Do a good job with that. We have Chris Phillips coming, who is um, director uh, of a a counseling, uh, CELA International Counseling, I believe, based out of South Carolina. He's helping churches get counseling ministry started in addition to having his ministry go forward. And so uh, very insightful uh, to dealing with people's emotions, feelings, deepest needs of their heart. And his session will be on Monday afternoon. It'll be a wonderful time. My brother Andrew's coming down to give us a session on church music ministry. We're excited about that. Um, I'm sure my dad will have him sing some. Excited to hear that. And then we have uh, Bruce Fry. He'll be speaking Sunday night on how uh, ways that God can use your testimony, ways God can use your testimony. It'll be a wonderful time. Um, And then we have Scott Carsley coming. He's just going to do a very practical workshop on finances and budgeting. And so how God wants us to be good stewards of that. He's the director of the Edge Christian Camp in Virginia. Uh, I believe it's uh, right outside Jamestown, Virginia. And so we're looking forward to all these speakers coming and hosting them. I forgot one more. The Andrew Johnson family, he's an evangelist. They travel around, they sing. Uh, They'll be helping out with special music on that Sunday, but they are going to be performing in our uh, academy concert, spring concert on Monday night. And so we'll have a good time. Uh, You'll be blessed by his family, but let's be a blessing to all of these pastors. I'm excited about it, okay? Let's be a blessing to them. Um, I mention all of that to say this. We need volunteer help. If you can help greet, if you can help prepare food, if you can help serve food, if you can help do anything for that conference, please see me after the service tonight. We need uh, more of our church volunteers to get involved, and uh, it'd be a great opportunity to serve and be a blessing to other pastors. All right? Um, Let's pray for the Jeremy Baker family. I mentioned at the beginning of the service that he did uh, pass away. That's Donna Baker's son. We'd be in prayer for them. And... uh, there's several that are mentioned on here that I do not have notes for, but they are known to the Lord. And I want to make mention of this, that we need to be in prayer for them. Take this prayer bulletin. As you go up from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, you spend some time in your secret place, just pray. Just pray to the Lord and uh, let the Lord speak to your heart. And uh, we're excited about everything um, that God is doing through our local church here and how we can have an impact in people's lives. That's the most important part, is impacting people and impacting their hearts. Let's uh, let's come before the Lord tonight, and I'm going to ask my mom to come and play the piano tonight. We'll spend some time in prayer for these different requests that were mentioned. Does anybody else have a request tonight? Anybody have a request? Anybody else? We're praying for Ms. Edwards' family um, with uh, your grandfather uh, passing away. Let's pray for the Edwards' family tonight. And uh, pray that God will comfort them. As she begins to play, this altar is open. If you'd like to come forward and spend some time in prayer, praying over this or praying over the message tonight, I encourage you to do so.
Lord, as we continue in prayer tonight, we do pray for these requests that are on our bulletin tonight. We pray especially for the Baker family. I ask tonight that you would be with Ms. Donna. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would help her. And uh, Lord, that you would comfort her, be with the family there. We pray tonight that you would be with our, our mayor, our city council members. Help them to judge righteous judgment and to have righteous discernment. We pray tonight that you would be with the other requests that are, that are mentioned here. Please meet each need how you see fit. I do pray for our church family tonight that you would help us to be able to reflect on the message tonight, to be able to find time to put you number one on the top of our list as our priority. Lord, if we have any misplaced priorities tonight, help us to refocus those priorities and put them back in their rightful places. Lord, I do pray tonight that you would be with our Awana clubs and the Spanish ministry. I pray that you would bless them and that you would speak to the hearts as they go through the, their service time through their Bible memory time. We pray that you would bless the workers that are out there as well. Thank you for your goodness and mercy to us and the provision that you do have for all of us tonight as your children. I pray that you'd help our church to make a difference for you. Lord, I pray that you'd help us and give us the strength and the courage that we need tonight. Help us to be a, an effective witness for you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Please be with our pastor and be with DJ tonight. Give them safety as they'll be traveling back. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand as we get ready to be dismissed. Um, one more thing I wanted to mention is our, some of our juniors and seniors are taking their trip to Washington, D.C. next week, leaving next Monday, returning next Friday. Please be in prayer for them that God will protect them and uh, we'll have a good time. Um, if you'd like to sponsor a student, uh, please see me after and uh, they could, some of them could use your help. And I know that'd be uh, very, very much appreciated from some of our juniors and seniors that are going on the trip. But be in prayer for that trip. Be in prayer for our pastor and DJ as they do travel back from their conference here uh, towards the end of this week. And uh, do be in prayer for um, our church, our church family. Um, I know some of our, our ladies here, uh, you have Ms. Donna's contact information. Try to reach out to her, shoot her a text message, maybe make a phone call. Uh, I don't know how your, close your relationship is with her, but... I know that um, she loves me and my family, and uh, we love her and her family, and we'll be praying for them tonight. But thank you all.